we are up and running. So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Hillary Highslope. I'm the executive director of the Cluiston Chamber of Commerce. And if you're tuning in now, we are just starting our Henry County Commission District 5 candidate forum. Um, I'm joined this afternoon by Michael Atkinson, Miss Jamie Flynn, and Mr. Juan Carlos Santana, who are candidates for the District 5 seat. Um, I would like to note the chamber does not endorse any candidate. That is not what we're here to do. Uh, we are simply here to ask questions, some collected from the community, some that we had ourselves. Uh, ask questions, get answers, um, give the candidates a chance to talk directly to their voters. But essentially our goal is to make sure that we have uh, a voter base that is prepared to go cast their votes and has all the information that they may you know, they may need to cast a, a good and proper vote um, in August. So welcome to the three of you. We're excited to have you with us today. And uh, we'll dive right in and give um, the floor. I'm looking at my alphabetical by last name list. We'll give Michael Atkinson his introductory three minutes. Good evening. Thank you for having this. Um, I'm Michael Atkinson, candidate for District 5. Uh, I'm a general contractor in the community, been over 15 years. I've uh, been married for over 15 years, have two stepsons and a granddaughter. Um, we love the community. We're in the community. I've uh, been a part of community service for years. Uh, we want to continue to be a part, uh, give back to our community, and uh, make Hendrick County better tomorrow than it was today. That's our plan. Um, so with that being said, you know, I'm not real long winded. So, um, you know, we'll get into some more with some of these questions. All right. Thank you. Um, up next, Miss Jamie Flynn. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Hendrick County. My name is Jamie Flynn. I am a lifelong resident of Hendry County. I have owned in District 5 for over 15 years, going on my 16th year. Um, so very much so rooted into District 5 and a lot of the communities. Um, I am the housing director for the Seminole Tribe of Florida. So I worked in the government sector for a sovereign nation um, for 16 years now, something I'm very proud of. I'm a Republican candidate for your choice for County Commissioner District 5, and I look forward to answering a lot of the questions that are coming up. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Santana, would you like to introduce yourself? You have to unmute yourself. Uh -uh. Now you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello? You hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Juan Carlos Santana. I live in Montura Ranch Estates, 360 Appaloosa Avenue for five and a half years. I have been a volunteer with the charity for four years in all the, the east uh, sector of Henry County, which is uh, District 5 and 4. Uh, I work as a jail tech in the jail house in the cherry office in Nobel. Uh jail tech is a is a now they call it jail tech is we, we all used they, they used to call it control room officer. Uh I am a former state of Florida correctional officer. I work in Henry CI, I work in Everglades, I work in uh, South Florida CI. Uh I used to live here in uh, Henry County from nineteen ninety six to two thousand. Uh, I love Henry County. I used to come to Henry County since 1979, do hunting and a lot of things I used to do here. Uh, I love this community. That's why I'm a volunteer with the sheriff. And I see that the the area of the district number five, the woods, have been neglected by the commission, especially by the commissioner that is there now, the Democrat. That's why I'm running. Uh, I have been there with the community all the time. I, I have been a Central County Water Control District Supervisor for four years. I've been with the community all the time. 
and I'm planning to continue with the community in District 5 all the time because there is a lot of need. Uh, I believe, uh, can, can I talk about my, my agenda now or, or not? Um, no, sir. Well, I mean, you can. You have a minute and eight seconds left. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I want to build a central sector for the sheriff uh, office, uh, which is a central sector would be uh, uh, Montura Ranch State, Pioneer, La Dica, Black Hole, making a mini station in Montura Ranch States. So the deputy response time will be a lot quicker. Also to build the central station, sec central sector for the fire and rescue, uh, making a Montura Ranch uh, the volunteer of the fire department there, uh, the the central sector station, to in that, in that way we minimize the response time in emergency situation. Uh, that's part of my agenda. Okay, well, welcome all three of you. Thank you for um, joining us today. And without any further ado, we're just going to jump right on into these questions. Um, I do ask that in an effort to not be like super redundant, um, if you don't hear the question, I will repeat it when it's your turn to answer. All you have to do is let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna ask it one time and then let you all you know answer one at a time. So Mr. Atkinson, you will go first. And the question is, with a small follow-up, what qualifications and experience make you the best candidate for Henry County Commission District 1, and can you provide a specific example from your past work that could demonstrate your um, leadership and problem-solving skills? Okay, so some of my, you know, experiences as being a contractor um, with building, budgeting, uh, being on the City Commission, um, give me some experience with the local government, give me knowledge to, you know, MSBUs, taxes, millage, you know, everything that goes with it. Um, so being involved with the community, I get to hear what people's concerns are. Uh, and I think being involved in all of the county gives me the advantage to listen to all the needs and then we can work together to come up with solutions for each district. Uh, some of the specific examples is the flagpole coming in the city of Gluston. Uh, the city got a quote on that for $125,000. We were able to come in, help get it on track, and we ended up getting that project done for under $25,000. Uh, you know, we were able to do that through our company and that, you know, helps us um, give back to the community uh, because we have been blessed. So that's some of the, you know, one of the things that of a problem solving skill uh, on a project that was recent. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, Ms. Flynn? Yes, so first and foremost, my years within the district, I've lived most of my life in District 5. I've owned in District 5 for over 15 years, and like I said, I've raised my girls here with my husband. Currently working on my master's in business administration, I plan to graduate soon with only two classes remaining. I've dedicated my career to serving communities in the housing industry. With housing being an economic driver of any community, these skills and knowledge will ensure I approach any situation with a community first mindset. I am alumni of Leadership Florida, which is a prestigious group of leaders and business professionals throughout our great state. I've completed the Hendry Glades leadership and most recently awarded the top 40 under 40. Working in government for over 15 years, I've dedicated countless hours to policy development, budgets, KPI uh, and metric development, as well as team building and problem solving when policy doesn't fit the need for the people. I've worked countless hours in the EOC pre and post storms ensuring the people of district five are well cared for in the event of an emergency in addition to i've negotiated contracts for large and small businesses to provide much needed services within our county and throughout our great state of florida all right thank you miss flynn uh mr santana uh yes ma'am thank you well like i tell you my background is in law enforcement I have been a state correctional officer, former state correctional officer. I used to have my security guard company in uh, South Florida for over 15 years. Um, 
right now, like I tell you, I've been a volunteer with this lady for four years. I work as a jail tech in the jailhouse. My concern is the safety of the residents of Henry County. I Part of my agenda is building a new building for the sheriff office, a new building for the jailhouse, which is all, and uh, also to do a salary increase to the deputies, to the road deputies and to the correctional officers, deputies to the level of Henry, of uh, Lee County Sheriff, which is 62,000. In that way, we don't, we don't lose so many good officers because of the pay, pay rate, because of the salary, okay? So that's part of my agenda. Also the safety, part of the safety of the resident of Henry County is with the making a central sector for the sheriff office uh, uh, with the administration of Montana Ranch Estates, also with the fire and rescue, okay? So, so they can respond with a lot of quicker uh, response time than right now, but it's gonna be part of my end also also to build shelters for the school bus stops because the school bus stop in the rural area of uh, Henry County, uh, Pioneer, La Lica, and uh, yeah, they don't have shelter for the children. Uh, the weather condition, when it rains, they have no shelter. We have to protect themselves. We have uh, dangerous animals over here, like snakes and other types, and uh, they don't have no place to be secure. That's part of my agenda. I have talked to many people in the government in Henry County, and all of them give me excuses, but when I got there, it's going to be my priority to do that. At the same time, I want to bring okay. businesses that is your to time. the area. From okay, thank you, Mr. Santana. Thank you. And the next question is going to go to you, Ms. Flynn, first. Um, what are your top three priorities if elected to the Henry County Commission, and how would you achieve these priorities within, you know, within your term? Sure, so fiscal clarity and responsibility, the evaluation creation of maintenance plans, and further evaluation of and or the creation of programs through the purchasing policy that supports our local businesses. So with an operations mindset, it is important to first start off with a true understanding of internal and external resources. Meeting with our county directors to fully understand the challenges they face on a daily basis to accomplish the task at hand. Fiscal clarity will be provided to the constituents of Henry County with a community first approach that reflects the needs versus the wants as it pertains to fiscal responsibility. Maintenance plans, as someone who has created these from scratch, I am confident that I can be a leader in the evaluation creation for our county. Launching a full program to first gather data of the needs then prioritizing those needs with the five year period. Through the review and evaluation of the solicitation process and rewriting policy if needed, the business owners of Hendry County who are properly credentialed should receive additional points when being scored. Furthermore, launching educational online training would allow business owners to connect with and learn how to properly bid on our solicitations and which bids are coming available. Thank you, Ms. Flynn. Uh, Mr. Santana, if you would like to answer the question on your top three priorities. Top three priority? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, building a, a sheriff office building, uh, a jailhouse building, uh, which they're going to be together, uh, uh, and making a, a center sector for the sheriff office uh, and for the fire uh, rescue in uh, with the with the uh, uh, mini section in Montana Ranch Estates and uh, the school bus uh, shelters for the children. Okay, great, thank you. Mr. Atkinson? So three of my top priorities is public safety, roads and drainage and taxes. Uh, public safety, as Mr. Santana said, in Pioneer, Ladika, Montura, the response times are extremely long. Uh, we've got to do something to get those under. Um, I've been endorsed by Southwest Florida Firefighters and Paramedics Association. This is the group that uh, represents Hendrick County EMS. Uh, so we've had several conversations and hopefully in the future we'll have more conversations to, to get more EMS staff 
throughout the county. Roads and drainage are a huge issue. Uh, Pioneer in 2017, when Irma came through, they flooded. A uh, month ago, they flooded again with the little storm that we had come through. Uh, so there's issues going on with culverts and everything else we have to address. Uh, wasteful spending with the taxes. We have to go in, we can't rubber stamp everything. Uh, just because we've done it for so long, we've got to look at it and make hard decisions on what we really need. Uh, we're to the point where we don't have any time to put things off that need to be done. Um, and, and hopefully working with staff between EMS, fire, uh, road and bridge, uh, the county administrator, we can get a lot of these things uh, done and look at these things line by line. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Mr. Santana, we'll uh, direct this question to you first. How will you address the economic okay. development needs of Hendry County? Okay, uh, good question. The development needs of Hendry County, it's uh, very important, okay? Because I believe uh, here we have like a paradise, paradise in South Central uh, Florida. It's a really good place for businesses to come over and build a housing complex and different type of businesses for a lot of uh, business company. One thing I want to mention, and uh, I have find out through the years uh, uh, coming through this area, uh, we have to open our mind, you know, to, to new businesses. Because sometimes I have heard uh, commissioners, uh, commissioners from the city of uh, Clearfield, also for the county, have been closed to open the, the doors for big businesses to, to, big, to big, big businesses to come over uh, uh, to the city and to the county. So my 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 agenda will be a policy for open doors for all big businesses to come in. We have to have open mind on that. We cannot be closed minded and say no 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 we don't want home people to come in. No 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 we don't want this other company to, no 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 come in come in because that is gonna build uh, a more employee for a citizen, for a resident. So we have to have an open mind on that. Another thing I'm going to tell you that I'm going to be uh, speaking up is I don't believe in impact, impact taxes. The impact taxes that they had and they want to put it again in the county, I don't believe in that. I am a Ronald Rigo uh, believer. No taxes, less taxes, the best for the residents, the best for the businesses. Because if you want business to come into to Henry County, and we put impact, impact taxes, uh, building taxes, uh, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, they don't, they don't wanna come. So if you want for them to come, we have to make it easier for them to come here and do business with us. So I am against the impact taxes. So All I'm right. gonna be having thank you. very good, uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Mr. Atkinson, the same question thank for you. you. So, so for me, I think we need to focus more on the businesses that we do have to promote them um, and, and let them grow into larger companies. Uh, before in the past, we've the city, the county has always put their all their eggs in one basket. That's just not something that we can do. We can welcome big businesses uh, that want to come to the area but I don't think we should focus all of our attention and spend all of our resources to bring them here uh, because nine times out of 10, it doesn't work out. We just waste county money that we don't have. Um, like I said, if we promote uh, local businesses, give them incentives to, to grow into bigger businesses that, you know, more employment and everything else. Uh, work it, and we can work on uh, policies with staff and, uh, different directors to make things easier, make them flow a little bit better, where when people do come to expand, get permits, uh, bring a business into town, uh, they're able to to get that done fairly easy. All right, thank you. And Ms. Flynn. Yeah, so I wanna start off with the meaning of economic development, which is the process in which an economy grows or changes and becomes more advanced, especially when both economic and social conditions are improved. So when we're discussing 
economic development, it's important to have a plan in place, master planning and zoning to ensure the overall flow of the county continue to fit the demands and the needs, ensuring we have a project for the overall county and not just individual parcels and piecemeal zoning for each lot. Advancement in the consideration of technology, education, social, and residential needs of Hendry County. I would act as a key liaison between the public and private sector, working with planning, zoning, and permitting needs, ensuring the county has an operational plan and change, man change management followed by strategic planning to ensure we have the progress in master planning for Hendry County. Also making sure we have progressional updates to our communities and our constituents to ensure they are aware of what part of the planning process we are in and that they buy into the plan as well. All right, thank you so much. Um, just one second. So now we are back to Mr. Atkinson. What are your plans to improve infrastructure in Hendry County, including roads, utilities, and public services? And how will you, how would you propose that um, you fund these improvements? So roads in District 5 are ridiculously horrible. Mm -hmm. um, they've been neglected for a lot of years. Um, I don't know what the reason for it is. I don't know if it's the lack of planning. Um, I know there's a lack of resources, uh, but we have to, we have to get a long-term plan on these roads to make sure that they're going to be replaced in a timely manner. The longer these roads go, they start getting sub base problems. And then the road goes from, you know, one, one amount to double, triple. To, to get those back to acceptable conditions. Uh, funding these things, we can try to go to the state, even federal, uh, through MSBUs like they've just done over in uh, the Port LaBelle side in the community. Uh, and look at some of this stuff that's on autopilot, you know, and make sure that we address this stuff. And like I said earlier, we just don't rubber stamp because we've been doing it for so long. All right, Ms. Flynn. Yes, so maintenance plans and proper budgeting, launching an evaluation of current infrastructure and roads within a five-year period to ensure we capture the grant monies needed to know how to represent the needs in Henry County and in Tallahassee. This is why selection of our leadership is so important, Henry County. We must have proper representation, not just here in our communities, but also somebody representing us in Tallahassee. Evaluating the internal and external resources, knowing what our grant needs are and how to go after them. We currently have a grants team. We need to know what they are needing so that we can ensure we give them the proper resources and that they know what kind of grants to look for on behalf of Henry County. Thank you. Mr. Santana. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, you, you're talking about the infrastructure, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, one thing is very important I want to mention. It's uh, District Number 5, which is Montura Ranch State, Pioneer, uh, La Vica, uh, Flaco, and the surrounding area of uh, Luton. Uh, let me tell you one thing I experienced uh, by working at the Central County Water Control District uh, 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 super, as a supervisor of the board for four years. I have noticed that the county collect our taxes, our taxes, and uh, but they use it mainly in uh, to building the infrastructure of La Belle, Port La Belle and Cluse. They forget about the rural zone. They forget uh, big time about the rural zone, which is the district number five. And uh, that's very important for me. I want equal investment of the tax money in the infrastructure, also for the rural zone of Henry County, not only for La Belle, for La Belle, and Clues, also for the rural area, because they collect taxes from, them, from us, so they should put the taxes in building a infrastructure. Uh, the roads, the, all the, the areas that we need uh, uh, to improve, we should use that tax money for the rural area 
of Henry County, County also. Um, I'm bringing a new businesses from the outside. Mm. It's going to create uh, more money for the county to uh, 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 do, uh, use, for, use it for the infrastructure. That's why I'm saying that we have to bring businesses, big businesses from the county and everywhere in the nation. We have to have open mind. We cannot continue having closed mind, telling the big businesses not to come to Henry County or to Clearstone uh, or to Labelle. All right, thank you. Um, Ms. Flynn, we'll go back to you. How do you plan to ensure transparency and accountability in the county commission? Um, specifically, you know, what measures might you implement to keep the public informed and more involved? Sure, so community meetings, quarterly in person and meeting recaps via social media. I've conducted community meetings throughout the state of Florida and various parts of the United States. I understand their value and the importance of, con of connecting with the people. I'd like to also evaluate the county website. Let's look for ways to make sure we have a user-friendly web website and timely releases of information. It's important we are one team working together for the people of our county and our communities. My career over the past 16 years has supported me the opportunity to work with communities as far south as Tamiami Trail to as far west as New Mexico. I've conducted presentations regarding policy updates, program creations, and the importance of being a homeowner and how to sustain a healthy and safe environment for your home. All right, thank you. Mr. Santana? Uh, yes, well, which one is the question, please? Yes, absolutely, not a problem. How do you plan to ensure transparency and accountability in the Henry County Commission? And specifically, what measures would you like to implement to keep the public more um, involved and informed? Well, my main thing would be uh, be out there with the with the residents of District Number Five, which uh, the person that is in the chair is missing in action. I never have seen it in any in any of the rural area of uh, of uh, of uh, Montura Ranch Estates, Pioneer, La Vica. And a flag hole like my opponents. I have never seen out there. Only in election time, I see my opponents also in the, in the rural area of uh, Henry County. So I be out there, like I have been all this time, out there with the residents of DC5. And uh, I I believe in the meetings, we'll, we'll uh, should give more time uh, to the public to speak up in the meeting, during the meeting time and uh, in, in, interact. I have seen the meetings of uh, Henry County, which I think are good, are good, very professional. Uh, I like it, but I believe we should give more time to the residents that want to go there and speak up and uh, interact with the, with the commissioners. And that is gonna be uh, my main thing. But my main thing is being out there with the residents of I mean, the residents of Henry County, uh, District Number Five, and all the residents, all the residents of Henry County, like I have been up to now. All right, thank you, Mr. Atkinson. So, one of the things with transparency is, I see in the meetings, they sometimes the director comes up to present an item, and they just throw out a motion. They cut him off to throw out a motion. I think these things need to be addressed they need to be uh, said what they are the economic impact of them if it's positive negative um, and that'll give us accountability to let the people that can't make it to the meetings or see the agenda that you know they can watch these meetings online uh, and get the full picture of, of what you're voting on uh, community involvement's huge uh, I've been involved with the community for years uh, been in Pioneer at community meetings, been in Montura at their meetings. Um, that's some of the things that I'll continue to do is be at these meetings to give advice uh, and work between these communities and the county commission to make sure that District 5 is represented. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Santana, the next question will start with you. How will you address the needs and concerns of the diverse communities within Hendry County? Uh, I tell you what, I, I, I gotta tell you my opinion 
and uh, I like to be transparent. I like to be respectfully, but transparent. That's the way I am. That's the way I am right now. That's the way I'm going to be in the future. Uh, I have been coming to Henry County since 1979. Okay, because I love hunting, I love outdoors, and I'm an outdoor person. So I love the people of Henry County. Okay? I work in the Henry CI three years as a state correctional officer. I was the only Q and born out there. I have my experiences, which I keep it to myself. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, I love the way. <laughs> yeah, I want to keep it to myself. Uh, that's between me and God. Uh, so, so, so the transformation that I have seen in Henry County alone, alone because we have blend, we have, uh, we are a truly melting pot right now. And I love that. Before I bump head many times with the old timers, because they don't believe few of them. I don't say all of them, but a few of them, they don't believe in melting pot. They believe only Henry County be one ethnic uh, uh, group, okay? And, uh, uh, even though I love them, because I love everybody, no matter how they think, they have to write to think the way they think. But I didn't like that. But now I see the change on the new generations. Okay? And I love that. I love that. Because the main thing for me, I'm a Cuban refugee. I came to the United States when I was 15. Excuse me. I get emotional. That's okay. We'll give you about 10 extra seconds if you want to finish that thought. <laughs> no, no. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. So, so I came here uh, as a refugee in 1974. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe we are all Americans. We are all Americans. We live here. And I like to see, I mean, I mean, I love to see the transformation that Henry County have come through. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Atkinson, your question? So District 5 alone has about six different groups, communities, Pioneer, Ladika, uh, Montura, Flag Hole, Hooker's Point, Big Cypress, everyone different, unique in their own way. Um, and we have to work with each one of those groups to make sure they're represented for their needs. Um, none, none of them have the same needs and none of them have the same wants. So it, it's very challenging. It is three quarters of the county um, that represents District 5. Um, so we have to make sure that we are able to communicate and give one of the, the representation they deserve. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Flynn? Go ahead and repeat the question for me. Hillary. Certainly. How will you address the needs and concerns of the diverse communities within Hendry County? You know, I think we're hearing diversity quite a bit in the news and in our communities. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is a huge conversation that we're hearing about. And I think Mr. Santana made a great point. We have evolved immensely over the years in being able to accept one another. And I think that that's a great thing. Um, the only way to ensure that we are able to connect with all of our communities is to be in our communities. That's why it's so important when we make the selection for our next Hendry County District 5 uh, County Commissioner that we elect somebody that has been in this district, a part of this district, that has lived here and raised their families in it. Because that's how you really understand the communities, by being somebody who is there connected with them, a part of them not just stepping up when it's time for an election. All right, thank you, Ms. Flynn. Um, so the next question will go to Mr. Atkinson first. If you wanna go ahead and get yourself unmuted, um, Mr. Atkinson. And it is, what are your plans to enhance public safety and emergency services in Hendry County? Um, 
And how do you intend to collaborate with, you know, other local law enforcement and emergency service providers? So with emergency public safety, emergency services, um, like I stated earlier, uh, the mid county section of Hendry County is lacking in a huge way. Uh, I've talked to some firemen from Clewiston because the fire department in uh, Montura, Pioneer are lacking uh, volunteers because the area it's in. So they're having to go out to Montura and Pioneer. It's taking them 45 minutes to get to Montura. That's life or death. That's, you know, a structure burnt or a structure safe. Uh, we have to find ways to bridge this gap and take over those departments to make them run correctly. Uh, this is some ways, you know, I, like I said, I was endorsed by the Southwest Florida Firefighters and Paramedics. Uh, I like to work with them, see how we can get more paramedics, keep some mm -hmm. here. Um, I know we have to do some stuff with some pays, uh, salaries and everything else uh, to ensure that. Uh, but working with the sheriff and the directors of emergency management, uh, I think we can get some of this taken care of. All right, thank you, Ms. Flynn. Yes, yeah, so I've worked with FEMA and various public safety professionals for many years. I've worked hurricanes and fire EOCs right here in our district. Plans to enhance our public safe safety would be to evaluate the current fuel plans. What's the demand versus the supply for our fuel? We also need to evaluate our debris plans. We have to ensure that we align with FEMA and we have a way to get debris picked up as swiftly as possible. Establishing, establishing emergency agreements and contracts in accordance with the county needs and restoration services in the event of a catastrophic loss. We need to evaluate the communication methods and technology available in the event of power outages. As somebody who was here during uh, Hurricane Irma in District 5, we didn't have power for two weeks. And so we also need to ensure we have mutual aid agreements. Henry County should ensure we have mutual aid agreements with all surrounding emergency services, hosting quarterly meetings that would bolster effective communication amongst those professionals in various areas. All right, thank you. Mr. Santana, if you want to unmute yourself, um, I had to put you on mute. I apologize, but your uh, sheriff's office radio was causing a little bit of feedback in the background. You do need to click unmute. We cannot hear you, Mr. Santana. There you go. Hello. There you Hello. go. Hello. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so we're talking about safety. Right, law enforcement, right? Correct. Public safety and emergency services. Okay, that is my experience of all my life. I started working as a security officer in South Florida in 1979. Like I said, I have a security guard company. Or... <clears throat> Hello? You're good. Go you ahead. Do you see me? Yes, sir. We see you. Go right ahead. I don't know what happened. I don't see you. Okay. So so that's my my experience of a lifetime. I I work as uh, a former state correctional officer. I work with the sheriff uh, as a volunteer for four years. I work at the Yale uh, house. I know the need. I mean, what I need, the need to have the, the resident of uh, Central, I mean, uh, uh, of Henry County. We have to build the central sector, the sheriff office, uh, putting a mini station on Montura Ranch Estates. Uh, with an OIC, with the capital. OIC, that is gonna be supervising all those deputies right there in the, in the mini station in Montuna Ranch State. I, 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 I talk, I speak to the chief, uh, 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 Kevin Nelson, and I explained that to him. He told me, he thinks that's a great idea. He has been trying to do that for a while now. I told him when I be at the chair as a commissioner of Andre County, I will make sure that we have a central county uh, 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 sector for the sheriff office. Uh, at the same time, I want to build uh, uh, a central sector for the fire and, um, and rescue. Because now any emergency situation that we have in the Montana Ranch State or Pioneer or La Viga, it takes about 30 minutes from the trucks, ambulance to come from from Clewson to uh, the area of, uh, of the of central 
sector of uh, Henry County. And uh, in that way, the, the response time is gonna be a lot quicker, okay? Uh, make sure that we pay higher salary to the deputies of Henry County and the, and the correctional officers, okay? At the standard of Lee County, so they don't have to leave to Lee County. We have very good uh, officers over here right now. They are risking their life daily to protect our life and property. So they deserve to be at the same level that Lee County uh, Sheriff Agency, which is uh, $62,000 uh, uh, a year. All okay? right. Thank you. At the same time, I want to build. That's it? Yes, that was your time. My time <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all, all right. right. You guys are doing pretty good. Um, so this next one will go to Ms. Flynn. What are your views on affordable housing and how do you plan to, or how do you plan to address that critical need here in Henry County? Sure. So serving on the Federal Home Loan Bank of Atlanta's board, I currently represent the state of Florida. They're the bank of banks. I can tell you there is grant monies available to obtain. Housing being one of the largest economic drivers, the federal government has made affordable housing one of the top discussions and concerns. And working in the housing sector for over 15 years, when we talk about affordable housing, it isn't just the mortgage payment, it's the insurance, taxes, and maintenance upkeep. Let's focus on planned developments, resilient housing, and grant funding. And in speaking with the county, I'm told with the county, I'm told we have one person who works in the grants department. Once elected, I'd like to evaluate that department and those contracts, uh, the consulting contracts that, that our employee is working with to better understand their needs, to ensure that resources are available to connect with important stakeholders and contacts that I can bring to the table as your next county commissioner, and we can jumpstart the initiative for affordable housing right here in our district. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Santana, uh, what are your views on affordable housing mm -hmm. and how do you plan to address that critical need here in Henry County? Well, uh, my main uh, uh, issue is gonna be the impact uh, taxes, no impact taxes. That way everybody that wanna come in uh, uh, our, our beautiful Henry County, they can come in and build the house without having to pay impact taxes. Because I believe that will take a, away a lot of people that they wanna invest here, they wanna come here and build the house. If they see they have to pay $10,000, $15,000 for impact taxes, they don't wanna come over here. They're gonna to go to another county near us where they don't wanna be having impact taxes. So uh, no impact taxes for me uh, when I get to the commission. At the same time, uh, I believe we can help the people getting loans. In the, 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 there's a lot of people out there that they don't have the money to pay uh, down big down payment for build house. We as a government, we should try to to make some type of way uh, talking to the legislature in Tallahassee, to the representative of Tallahassee, trying to to help them to uh, uh, buy housing uh, uh, with a low down payment or with no down payment. Uh, that's, uh, that's, I think that would be very important for the people that want to have a house here and they don't have the money to make money to pay a, pay a big down payment so we can uh, accommodate them to get an a, a easy loan to, to, to have the houses down here. That's my, that's my main thing. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Atkinson? So affordable housing. Um, you know, we have to make sure that we that people are able to build cheaper here than they can in our neighboring counties. If we raise a tax, raise MSBUs, raise everything that we have every year, instead of really looking at what we have and what we really need, we're not gonna get these people to come here. Just like Port LaBelle, Port LaBelle has been building out. They've got land, Banyan Village, there's lots. Um, Clouston's landlocked. We don't have any lots available to build on. So that drives up the cost and makes them unaffordable. We get people from out of the state that are coming here to move to Florida that are selling homes for four or five times what they cost here and they're driving the locals out of homes uh, because they can't afford to buy homes. Uh, and they're just driving the values up. Taxes are more um, 
so many things. We can work with uh, grant writers. We can work with um, our local housing to get grants. Um, they do all the time for housing for low income, uh, remodels and different things like that. So, so there's things we can do federally, state uh, and local to help push some of this stuff along. All right, thank you. Mr. Santana, we'll start with you on this one. What initiatives would you propose to promote community engagement and involvement in local government? Well, that's very important. That's very important because I have been a, a public and activist uh, since 1980. Uh, when Ronald Riga was elected, I was an activist for Ronald Riga campaign. And um, I've been going through the years to many uh, uh, different uh, uh, meetings uh, in the Dade County Commission, Hialeah Commission, Miami Commission, because I love politics, because politics have to do with the daily to daily life of the residents. Mm -hmm. And here in America, we are fortunate that we have the best system of government in the world, which is a democracy. Okay? Um, I will uh, talk to the people, have uh, open meetings, open meetings. Uh, me as a commissioner, I will be uh, talking to the residents of uh, of uh, Montura Ranch Estates, Pioneer, La Liga, Flaho, making meetings in the in the in the in the Montura Ranch uh, uh, area, uh, uh, clubhouse, uh, making meetings there in the clubhouse, talking to the people, having open doors, open doors. And uh, so they can be feeling comfortable coming and talking to us, okay? And uh, 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 seeing the needs of the people is very important. When the people, the residents see that we have open door policies for them, uh, they feel comfortable that we come more to the meetings, okay? That's one thing we have to do. We have to have open door policies with all the residents and go to them. Not only they come to us, so I believe we have to do more meetings like in Pioneer. Let's go to Pioneer, all the commissioners in the county, go to Pioneer every few months. I, I, I make a meeting in Pioneer. Let's make a meeting in, 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 in Montura Ranch every few months. Let's make a meeting in Flaco every few months. Let's go to La Vica and make a meeting in La Vica also. So we be in contact with the people there in those uh, areas. And don't be just uh, sitting there in the commission in the cities. And uh, that's it. All but right. We have to go to them too. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Santana. Mr. Atkinson, the same question. So we've got to be involved with the community uh, in different groups, uh, out in the public, going into each community, going to their meetings, talking with those people. Uh, you know, we've, we've donated our time in our efforts for years. Uh, when Hurricane Irma came through, um, the city was without power for weeks. Uh, the outlying areas were, um, you know, we got out, we donated our time. Um, I didn't go to work for two weeks, um, passing out food, water, uh, and different things. That's what we have to do. Uh, we have to, to get out there and let these people know that we're not above them that we put our pants on the same way they do and that we're approachable and that we'll listen to their concerns and not just hear them. Uh, and then we'll take that and we'll use it and move their voice forward uh, as a community. All right, thank you. Ms. Flynn? Yes, yeah, so I wanna emphasize a portion of that question. It says, promote community engagement and involvement. And so communities are the backbone of government. It's important we have regularly scheduled community interactions, such as meetings and social and informative and use technology to our advantage. Now more than ever, we have to make sure we are staying engaged and aware of what government is doing and decisions they are making on our behalf. I've worked in communities for the past 16 years. I've attended communities, like I said, across the state of Florida and as far west as New Mexico. I'm very versed on the importance and implementation of those. 
In addition, I've had my girls right here in District 5, a district very important to us. We've been very active in local organizations, specifically the 4-H and FFA. My family participates annually in the local cattlemen and cattlewomen's dinners. We love those steaks as we all do here in Henry County and raising money for the scholarships for our local youth. We often donate items so that the cattlewomen can auction off uh, every year annually at their dinner. So we always look forward to those events each year. And I think that if we can promote more of those kinds of events, we'll have more interaction. All right, thank you. Our final question, we'll start with Mr. Atkinson. What steps will you take to promote fiscal responsibility and effective budgeting within the Hendry, within the County Commission? So it goes back to what I said earlier, we can't rubber stamp things that's in the budget that's on autopilot. We have to address those things. We've got to take our time. We're putting ourselves in this position we have to take our time to really look at these budgets and see what the needs are and being involved with our community we know what the needs are and then we can fight for this to be a responsible budget and be effective where we're getting things done and not just pushing money through the county that we're not seeing anything for it all right thank you miss flynn Yes, so fiscal responsibility and effective budgeting. So that comes down when you do KPIs, metrics, quarterly and cumulative run rates and evaluation of those numbers. As I direct my team in my current role, it's important that these numbers mean something to you and make you feel a certain type of way. Fiscal responsibility is more than just addition and subtraction. It's setting goals, evaluating processes and achieving those goals and ultimately mm -hmm. condition conducting an analysis on whether the county was able to reach them or maybe we fell short and why. So my time in government, I've established budgets, I've analyzed run rates and created a 35 page KPI report. I'm well versed on the process. Through budgets, we can create strategic planning, which often happens in establishing once again, the needs versus the wants and aligning the prioritization of projects based on the evaluation and the budget process. All right, thank you, Ms. Flynn. Mr. Santana? Uh, yes, ma'am, thank you. Uh, first, I would like to, to, to do like a, like a, make sure that the money that came to the, to the Henry County Commission is equally distributed, it's equally distributed in all the sector of Henry County, okay? not only in the sector of, uh, of the city of LaBelle and Clewston, uh, also in the rural area of Henry County, which is District 5, I would like to see that money distributed in the infrastructure, uh, many things, building new schools in Montura Ranch Estates uh, for the lot of children that we have out there. Uh, at the same time, I would like to see the money going for building a new sheriff office building and a jail house and uh, giving higher salaries to the deputies and correctional officers, uh, building shelters for the school uh, bus uh, uh, stops uh, for the children. Uh, so, so distributing the money more equally, okay? That's very important for me to do when I become a commission. All right. Um, so that concludes all of the questions that we have. Um, I, my timer is showing about 53 minutes so by the time we get through our closing statements, I do think that we'll be close to that one hour mark and I don't wanna keep you all much longer than that. Um, there's, I, I hear rumblings of thunder too. So we actually lose service too when it starts to rain. Um, but with that, I, I do wanna let you know, we're looking at Facebook, there are a lot of comments. So I want to encourage each of you to go in, you know, just make some sort of comment your name, why someone should vote for you, following, you know, whatever. It's not it's not for us about getting the comments. It's for you about getting the notifications from Facebook when people continue to comment on this. Um, the chamber is really always so glad. Brent, they're timing me out now too. The chamber is really always so glad to do these and give our candidates um, a great platform to just be able to continue to communicate with your voters. 
So be sure it's on the Clues and Chamber of Commerce's Facebook page. Be sure to go in there and um, and answer some of these questions. Look at them, answer them. Um, you know, engage, interact with these folks that are taking their time out to try to talk to you. Um, so with that, Mr. Atkinson, if you want to go ahead and do your uh, final three minutes to speak directly to your voters, um, tell them, you know, why you believe that they should vote for you. And then Ms. Flynn and Mr. Santana, you will each uh, get your opportunity to do that as well. Great. Thank you for having this again. Um, I would like to tell them all that, you know, I'm here, born and raised in Hendrick County. Um, our business is here. Our business has been here for over 35 years. Uh, we're not new in the community. Uh, we're not new to the community service. It's something that we've been doing for years. Uh, and I've continued to do it regardless of the outcome on August 20th. Uh, I asked for their vote on August 20th to be the next Hendrick County District 5 Commissioner uh, to represent them so they know they have somebody that's involved in the community and that they can approach. Uh, if they got any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, got a website, uh, and be watching the Facebook for videos um, about different information throughout the county. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Flynn? Yes, good afternoon once again, and thank you for this opportunity. District 5, I ask that when you're selecting who to vote for, consider somebody who has been a community member with you, who has been a landowner with you, who has been in multiple communities within mm -hmm. District 5. I've lived here, I've dedicated over 15 years here. My family and I have set roots here. As a qualified professional, somebody with a soon to be master's degree in business and administration, somebody that can go to Tallahassee and represent us, someone with experience in government and who will be able to properly represent our needs and our wants and what we really need to evolve here in Henry County. It's important that we don't just go for somebody who's jumping from one district to the next or who maybe who is out there trying to get the most popular vote. Popularity is no longer the most important. It's time that we ensure that we have somebody who is educated, who is qualified. We need someone who can actually represent us in Tallahassee. And I ask for your vote as somebody, as one of you who has been right here in these community, raising our kids together, that can represent us. So when you vote in August, vote for Flynn for the win on August 20th. Thank you. Mr. Santana? I'm just talking like you guys can hear me. Sorry. Mr. Santana? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 well, I would like to say I believe uh, in America we should go back to uh, the roots, okay, to, to to how this count, country was created by the founding fathers. Uh, it's a, uh, uh, an elected official is a public servant. An elected official is a public servant. We are elected to serve the people, for the people, okay. We should not be going to be elected as a public official is to make money for our businesses, okay? So that's a one thing I see in America today that have changed the concept of the founding fathers. We have to be public servants. That's why I believe in volunteering, volunteering with the sheriff office, volunteering with the fire department, volunteering, because in that way you are serving the public. That's what we are. A sheriff is still with him, which is a great sheriff, He's a public servant. He do it very good. Uh, all the commissioners are public servants. So that's what I want to be. I want to be a public servant of the Henry County District 5. I am not there to make money for my company uh, uh, or anything like that. I believe in going out there and giving services to the people of Henry County District number 5. So I'm going to be a public servant, like I tell you, 
I believe in building a, 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 a central sector of the sheriff office and from the fire and rescue. Okay, and I believe in uh, uh, increasing the salaries for the Henry County deputies and correctional officers, uh, building shelters for the school bus stops. And uh, I will be out there like I have been up to now, like I have been up to now with you guys. And I have shown because I have been four years as a supervisor of Central County Water Control District Board. And I've been out there when the last uh, hurricane I, I, Ian, Ian, whatever the name is, I was out there. I was out there with you guys under the wind. I was out there with you guys when we didn't, we didn't have electricity. And let me tell you, to be honest, the only commission that I have seen from Henry County, the only person that I saw out there was mm -hmm. Ramon Iglesias, which I congratulate him and respect to him. He was the only one that was out there with us under the wind, under the rain. If one day I was out there at about three o'clock in the morning because we had an emergency, emergency situation on the canals. And when I look back, Ramon Iglesias was behind me. So, so my respect to him. So I'm gonna be like that. I'm gonna be a public servant and I'm gonna be out there with you guys, no matter what. I don't wanna be missing in action. No, 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 no. I am, I am not like, I, I am not showing up only in election time. No, no, no. I've been All on right. that every day of the year. Well Thank you for ending you. us on that note. And thank you all, um, all three of you again for joining. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing how this election cycle shakes out. The best of luck to all three of you. Thank you. All right. You thank guys you have much. a great day. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Bye bye.